so it is kind of bananas that I am assisted teaching on this retreat because the first time I went, which was like, I don't know, 2014, 2015, I was so skeptical. I thought the name Awakening the Divine was weird. I thought it was weird that a bunch of Jews were going to sit in a room and not talk for a week. Like the whole thing, I was just very skeptical. So I am, it's, it's so fun to hear you just imagine that 2014 you, it's not, it wasn't that long ago. And uh, we'll just introduce ourselves really briefly. Hi everyone, this is Sarah, I'm Sarah, Sarah plus Sarah. And I'm thrilled to be chatting with you here on Zoom and on Facebook Live and hi everyone out there. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be retreat managing and I'm really excited that one of the faculty is this person right here on the other Zoom screen, Sarah Hurwitz, who is an author who wrote a book about rediscovering Judaism. It actually talks about this retreat. And she also previously was a White House speechwriter for Obama's, for the Obamas. I, I enjoyed many speeches that you uh, wrote for, uh, for First Lady Michelle Obama. And we both did the Jewish mindfulness teacher training from the Institute for Jewish Spirituality. And now you're working as a hospital chaplain and uh, we're we're excited to just take a moment and talk about this retreat that's coming up so folks out there know that this is your chance. This is your chance to sign up and join us. So take us back. Take us back to 2014. Tell us a little more about oh your decision to come. Yeah. So, you know, I had, I had just broken up with this guy I was dating, and I was very, I was so anxious. Like, I actually wasn't even sure if I could sit still for even like 20 minutes, let alone four days. But I, I found this retreat on Google and I was like, awakening the divine, that is weird. Like that just sounds kind of woo woo. And I remember I was very late in signing up and I talked to the retreat manager, who was this lovely woman. And she was like, oh, it's not a cult, don't worry. And I was like, you have to say it's not a cult. Is that like, a, is that worrisome? But then I realized it was sponsored by Pardes, which is like this incredibly, this amazing learning institute in Jerusalem where like so many of my friends have studied and had this, these profound experiences and by, you know, several other places I really respected. So I took, I took a leap, right? I took a chance and it out to be this kind of magical experience, which was very surprising to me. Like, you know, the head teacher, James, the Rabbi James Jacob, Midson, Rabbi James Jacobson Mazels, he is also the head teacher now, which is very, feels very full circle. And I just found him to be so warm and so empathetic and compassionate. And everyone was like walking us through everything. And it was this super diverse group of Jews. And by the way, I also knew almost nothing about Judaism at the time, which is, it was very early on in my Jewish journey. So like, you know, I was with Jews who were really observant, Jews who were like me, who were not in any way observant, who didn't know a lot. It was just this diverse group of people together just trying to be present, trying to wake up, doing these amazing practices of meditation and Jewish prayer. And it was, it was quite amazing. It was surprisingly amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, so I, I bet there's some people watching who are thinking, oh, you know, maybe I should go, maybe not. I'm, I'm, I, I think of myself as someone who wants to be a spiritual person. Maybe I'm spiritual, but not religious. And I understand that on at least one of these retreats, you had some sort of moment of spiritual awakening. Maybe, maybe you heard God's God's voice. I'll I'll let you tell it. <laughs> <laughs> Which was actually funny because I was really I was definitely an atheist at the time. Like I was, we just like we did these like we did this exercise that I just thought was so absurd. Where we were, we went out into nature one night, like just out into the woods or the fields, and we're supposed to talk out loud to God. And I was like, I am not doing that because I don't believe in God. So that's really dumb, but okay. But everyone else was doing it. Like, gosh, who are these weirdos? Fine. So I did it and I found it to be really moving. And this is actually funny because, you know, by that point, there had been so many new kind of practices that I had tried on this retreat that I was like surprisingly moved by. And so if I think for people who, you know, are skeptical about whether they're a spiritual person, I get you. Like, I get you. I, I do not think I would have described myself as a spiritual. You know, I know I would not have described myself as a spiritual person when I came on this retreat. I was more an anxious person who was looking to be less anxious. But, you know, I think what was so helpful about this retreat was it wasn't like overbearing or heavy handed or like, now we will go out into the woods and howl at the moon and sing a soul song. Like, that's not my jam, right? I'm not, that's just not how I roll. 
it was accessible and it was gentle and it was like, okay, here's a traditional Jewish practice. Here's how it works. We're going to give it a try. See what you think. It just felt really welcoming. And it was like an invitation to just try some new things. And I'm so glad I did because I can tell you, I never would have done most of the things I did on this retreat, not on this retreat. So I will say like, I think it, it kind of opened up something in me that I didn't know was there. I actually write about this in my book. And I, I had this experience where I had a felt sense of the divine, which like, you know, the me of 10 years ago would be like, what is this woman talking about? What? But I did have this really profound spiritual experience. And I, you know, I don't think I've had an experience like that since then. But for me, it's kind of this well I can go back to. Like it's something, it kind of just opened up this deeper part of my existence. It was like, I'm now feel like after that, I kind of was swimming. I've been swimming in the deeper waters of my life. Um, and I know like, if you're like me before this and listening, you might be like, whatever, this woman is just like kind of weird, but I don't know. There is just something about being in this beautiful community and trying these really powerful Jewish spiritual practices in a welcoming and inclusive and inviting way that just really worked for me. And it might work for you, right? This retreat is for it really is for everyone. Like I knew very little about Judaism. There were people who knew a great deal about Judaism and guess what? We make it work for everyone, right? The goal is to make everyone feel included and welcome and to just give people a chance to try new Jewish spiritual practices. I love that. Whoa, that's a <laughs> statement right there. Uh, so you're gonna be a teacher on this retreat. You're gonna be one of the faculty and spoiler alert, faculty are allowed to talk. So yes. they're going to be teaching and there's going to be opportunities to, to be together and some time to process. And, you know, let's say someone's thinking of, of, of coming on this retreat, but they, they want all of that, all the stuff you listed. They want the spiritual awakening. They want the moving through their anxiety. Uh, but they're really worried about the silence. They think mm. if I'm going to spend all this money and travel, I want to meet people. I want to connect with people. I want to be social. Can I get all that spirituality with some, you know, talking? So I so feel you, right? I think that's a fear I had as well. Like, I'm just going to be alone in my head for days on end. Are you, are you bonkers? Like, no way. But I will tell you, I was surprised at how not lonely it felt because you're in this room with 60 other people and with these teachers who like we really, and, and retreat manager, I mean, Sarah Chandler is like the best retreat manager ever, right? Like, and all of us are just working to care for you, to be empathetic and compassionate and to kind of make this a really supportive experience. So I never felt lonely on a retreat. Even with the silence, you're just surrounded by people who are all doing the same thing you are. You're never really alone on a retreat. You're surrounded by people. You're supported by these teachers who really care about you and want you to have a good experience. So it doesn't feel lonely. And yes, it actually, I think what's so powerful is like you're in community, you're not alone, but you can actually just really get quiet and actually begin to kind of you know, once all those really loud voices in your head and all those distractions and all that anxiety, once it begins to settle down, which it really does after a couple of days of really good practice, you can actually begin to hear much deeper voices. Um, you can just begin to get insights about your life that you really can't get in daily life when you're distracted by just the mundane daily things, when you're always chattering, when people are chattering to you, when there's emails and texts and social media and all that stuff. This is actually a chance to step outside of everyday life into something very different, into a space that is quiet and peaceful and, and supportive and loving as well. And to actually be able to like hear that most deep inner voice, I think that's something that this allows. So I don't think it's a lonely experience. That's at least in my experience, it has not been lonely. People might have different experiences. And if you are on retreat and it does get lonely, like you can come talk to a teacher and we will support you. Amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Everyone out there who's watching, click on the link below to learn more about the retreat and our other amazing teachers. And we still have some financial aid left if you apply in the next week or so. So we hope you'll join us winter in January in Massachusetts. Some nice silence, hopefully some soft snow, not too much snow. <laughs> and we'll see you all then. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Hope to see you then.